we talked so profoundly on this past Sunday, uh, what's in your head? That was a uh, powerful message. I went back and listened to it four times, and all four times I got something new out of it. And um, it's hard to believe that, you know, when you're standing up here ministering, and then when you go back and see yourself, you can't believe that's what was said out of your mouth. And so I've learned how to hear what God has to say because sometimes I can be so busy ministering the word in the spirit that I don't really hear it. And then when I go back and listen to it again, then I was like, wow, God, you said some profound stuff to really bless me. And so that's why I listened to it four times because it blessed me. And so we want to talk about stress. We talked about what's in your head. We shared that video uh, with so many people this past week. And so many people responded back. I needed it. One man called me from Charlotte. Uh, he had to be to work early in the morning. This morning, he called me about 11 o'clock. He said, man, this thing was so good, I had to listen to it again. He had to call me from Charlotte and, and tell me how much he enjoyed what's in my head. The anxiety, depression. Uh, you can be depressed and don't even know it. You can have anxiety and don't even know it. So we want to talk about stress tonight. What, what does the Bible say about stress? What is stress? First of all, let's, let's give a definition. Excessive. Let's start off right there. Excessive. Over and above. Negative mental emotion. Emotional strain or tension. In other words, something that's far more exceeding than what you can stand. You're going through something that you feel that it's out of your control. It's excessive. And many things, and many people respond to stress so differently. Uh, some people, they're very productive of under stress. And then some people are very uh, rude, and some people who are very quiet, some people are very standoffish, some people uh, just don't want to deal with people, some people hurt themselves because they don't know how to handle stress. And so I want to keep this in the forefront of your mind. What is stress? It is excessive, excessive, negative, negative information, negative situation that's sitting on your brain. Negative information. It's, it's, it's like you get a, let's see here, if I get this pen, now this pen is strong enough to hold this here towel. It's strong enough to hold this towel, right? So there's no stress there. But now take this podium and put it on this pen. That's too much stress. That pen going to bend and break. And that's what's happening to us, many of us. We're breaking up under stress. Because now, if it was just something minor, then you can handle that. But because of this thing that got too heavy for you, then it, it wears you out, wears you down. And so we want to find out what the Bible says about stress, how to handle stress, because it's unavoidable. You're going to endure stress. Some of you are sitting in here right now stressed about something. Every day you live, you're going to endure some type of stress. When you wake up in the morning, and stress is nothing more than a mental picture, a mental force of evil or negativity that's sitting on your brain. Something that you feel like you're out of control. And, and don't let it be a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, everything sitting on top of your brain. And so you, you have to learn how to prioritize what's important. Everything is important. But one thing that we need to learn to do and say in the midst of stress, one thing that you're going to have to learn how to say is no. You can't say yeah and yes to everything that pops up on your plate. And all of us important. All of So you got to be careful when you think your situation is the only situation that's important. If you ain't careful, you'll miss church because you're mad with somebody, then, then look at your situation. You'll be upset and don't talk to somebody because somebody, and, and you know what? Sometimes you add stress to yourself. You, have you ever drove reckless? I mean, the speed limit is 65, but you're doing 85. And you all on somebody's tail talking about you need to get out of the way. And you're getting all stressed out because, but you're the one speeding. You, you, you're not looking at the speed limit. You're just looking at the fact that whoever in front of you is going too slow. And they're going 65, you're doing 85, but you're riding on their tail, but you're stressed out. <laughs> oh, they ain't going too well. 
Let's look at something in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 4. Philippians 4, verse 4 through verse 8. We want to talk about stress again and what it means and how to handle stress. You're going to have stress. Like tomorrow, I think Friday, we're supposed to have this hurricane come through. That's stressful. Many of us lived in stress, couldn't find gas, couldn't find bread, needed to move furniture, couldn't find nobody to help you move furniture. You're stressed out. You'll be surprised what you could be stressed out over. A little piece of paper in your yard, and your yard is immaculate. All because your neighbor don't keep their yard up, and some, some leaves blew from their yard and your yard. You'll be surprised. If you don't deal with stress, stress is going to deal with you. Do you know that you can be stressful and quiet and calm and cool and collective and don't even know you're stressed out? It's an internal pain. That's what stress is, internal pain. And if you don't deal with that internal pain, the internal pain is going to deal with you. It can cause you to be physically sick. Stress can cause you to have diabetes. Do you know stress can cause you to have cancer? Stress can have, cause you to have a stroke. If you ain't careful, stress can really overtake you. I know some people who are uh, 350 pounds and in good health because they got the right mind. And I know somebody who got muscles but got diabetes. Eat right, drink right, everything, exercise right, and got diabetic, and, and they're diabetic. And it happened while they was in shape. Because they were so busy being stressed for trying to stay in shape. You should be shaped. You're so busy trying to get in shape, you stress trying to get in shape. Learn how to be content in the way you live. All right, let's look at something in Philippians 4, verse 4. Somebody mad. Watch what it says, Angie. Rejoice in the Lord always. Look what the writer says in Philippians 4, verse 4. He starts off by saying, rejoice. But then he gives you a destination where you should carry your rejoice to. He says, don't rejoice in a car. Don't rejoice in good health. But start your rejoicing off in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. But watch what he says next. Rejoice in the Lord always. All, how many ways? Always. I should always have God on my mind to tell him thank you. But it's hard to tell God thank you when you're angry. It's hard to tell God thank you when you're going through a frustrated situation or when people you think is in your life or should be in your life should be acting right and ain't acting right. It calls you not to say, Lord, I thank you. You go into that, what we talked about Sunday, that emotional piece of you. And when you become emotional, your emotions want to go into a direction. Emotions don't want to stand still. Emotions want to do something. Emotions want to grab hold of something. Emotions really want to get revenge. You got to be careful. That's why you got to feed your faith and starve your doubts. Because if you ain't careful, your emotions will take over. And then after your emotions take over, guess what happens when you get your senses back? I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have said that. But when you're going through something, you want to hurry up and get involved. You want to, the Bible says it's okay to be angry, but don't sin. Be quick to forgive. Don't be quick to respond. I, I saw somebody on, uh, uh, I put a picture out there on Facebook, and somebody responded with a few uh, challenging words. I'm going to say challenging words uh, to me. And, and I, I mean, boy, I sent them a book. Well, I take that back. I typed a book. But, but then I prayed before I, started, before I hit sin. And when I prayed, I didn't feel God tell me to sin. I had to delete that whole, all that type. And I could have boarded all that type if I talked to God first. <laughs> but because I wanted to get you back for being so negative towards me. All, see, you got to understand, people can stress you out. And if you ain't careful, you will let them stress you out. Let me read this again. Stress is an excessive are negative mental, mental, emotional strain or tension. What's sitting on your brain more than normal? Let me say that again. What are you thinking about before you go to sleep? What are you thinking about while you can't sleep? What's on your brain when you wake up in the morning? I thought the Bible said, cast all your cares unto the Lord, because he what? That's what the Bible say. You know it. But why do we have a problem casting our cares, our worries, our problems, our hurts, our pain? It seems like it's so easy to hold on to than to get rid of. 
So now we're learning how to be a Christian. I'm learning how to be a mature Christian. I'm learning how to be a better Christian. I'm learning how to face my enemies. I'm learning how to face even my family. You got to learn to quit holding stuff in all the time. Okay, let me explain. Go to Philippians 4 and 4 again. What it says? Rejoice in the Lord always. The writer says, rejoice in the Lord. And he said, always. How can I rejoice when I'm angry? How can I rejoice when I'm sad? How can I rejoice when I'm worried? I got all this pressure on me. Let, let's get something straight and get something understood. The world getting ready to get worse. Every single day you breathe, stress is going to get heavier and heavier. So what you got to do is learn what the Bible say tonight so you can apply to it tomorrow. So you can learn how to deal with stress because it's going to, I mean, your car going to break down at the wrong time. A hospital bill going to come at the wrong time. A light bill going to go up at the wrong time. Medicine that you thought was $10, all of a sudden it's $200 at the wrong time. Something going to happen that, that you ain't expecting. But, but you got to live in this world expecting the unexpected. Everything that goes on in this world cannot stress you out. Some things you got to learn how to say, oh, well. You got gypped out of your money. Oh, well. You got charged more than you should have got charged. And ain't nothing you can do to, to overturn the charge. Oh, well. It's just paper. But I really like to keep it. And sometimes God will allow you to lose something so he can show you you. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in your life that you don't want to happen so he can show you you ain't as strong as you think you are. How are you going to build up on your most holy faith if you ain't got some obstacles? Why has everything got to be peaches and herbs and, and, and roses? and <laughs> Why everything got to line up? Some things God trying to build your faith in hurt. Now, you understand something. Stress coming. You can't avoid it. Pain coming. You can't avoid it. Disappointment coming. You can't avoid it. And God already told you it's coming. He said this. This is what God said. He said, count it all joy. Now, that's just one part. Let's look at the other part. He said, no weapon form, formed. Pain was formed. Hurt was formed. Disappointment was formed. You are going to have a stressful situation. But what are you going to do tonight? You got to learn how through the scriptures, what to do before it happened. Everything normally is a manual before it happened. They teach you, it's called OJT, on-the-job training. Before we put you out there, we need to train you. So right now, you're getting your training on how to handle stress because it's getting ready to get heavy. You're getting ready to have some moments where you don't know how to sleep. You don't know what to do. You're going to wake up crying. You're going to go to bed crying because that thing going to get so heavy. It's coming. Why are you looking at me quiet? It's coming. You shouldn't be preaching that rev. You should be preaching that God is an overcomer. Over stress, he is. But you got to have something for him to overcome. <laughs> what verse 4 says again? Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord. And then he don't tell you how long to do it. He said always. Not a time frame. You got to rejoice always. You got to tell the Lord, God, you're so good always. Even while you're sitting in the hospital, the Lord, you're so good. Even when a wreck comes, the Lord, you're so good. Because we don't know how to give praises when we're in pain. We ain't been trained how to praise God when we got emotion. When things are not going well, when people ain't acting right, and when finances ain't acting right, health ain't acting right, children ain't acting right, we have not been trained how to give God praise in a crying moment. And even if you have been trained, you still got to fight through it. It ain't going to be, you don't mind if I be real around here. See, that's the problem. We got too many people around here in church preaching this here umbrella messages. You need to turn the umbrella around and catch some of this in water. You're going to get some pain around here, baby. I might want to tell you the truth right here. Because I don't need you to call me when your pain comes. This is your counseling session right here. 
Read, Rita. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yes. I will say it again. Rejoice. That writer said, I'm going to put emphasis on it. I want to put emphasis on, I need you to rejoice. Come on and say it. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. No matter what happened. No matter what Say it again. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. No matter what happened. Now, you spoke it out of your head, now speak it out of your heart. Father, I'm going to give you praise no matter what happened because you're God all by yourself. Hallelujah. Woo! Somebody just got stressed, lift up. Just that little saying got you stress free. All right, what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh -huh. I will say it again, rejoice. And the writer says, I'm telling you to rejoice. Now let me tell you to do it again. Do it again. Rejoice. Always. In the Lord. Because if you try to look for your mama, daddy, sister, brother, pastor to get you out of your problems, you ain't coming out. If you're looking for man to get you out of your stressful situation, you ain't coming out. Because if you look for, see, see you got to understand, I miss my daddy. There's moments I've said, man, I wish my daddy was here right now. My God, I wish my daddy was here. I need to talk to him about some stuff. Man, I wish my mama could hold me right now, hold me in, in, my, in her arms. I'm 57 years old, and I said, man, I want my mama to hold me right now. I w oh, I wish my mama could put her arms around me. So every now and then, I feel like a child. And I wish I had my adult parents alive so I can go and talk to them because I'm having some problems right now. I'm having some mental anguish right now. I'm having some fleshly problems right now. So I like to talk to my mom and daddy, but they ain't here. So God told me who I need to talk to. He said, I need to talk to him. See, if people don't line up with you, you know, I, 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 God got a way of really making you feel good because the day, man, I, yesterday I was crying about nobody loved me. Nobody ain't calling me. You know, all the people I know, ain't none of them called me. Ain't none of them checked on me. My God, where the people at that say they love me? That was yesterday. Then today, the I got all kinds of phone calls. Man, I'm talking my phone calls all in Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Florida, Houston. I mean, boy, I got excited. These people don't never call me. And they called me to say, I, you know, you was on my mind. I said, God, you know how to give a brother encouragement. You got to recognize the small things that God wanted to encourage you with. You over here looking for Tom Jones to encourage you, and God got Tom Harry over here encouraging you. It's the small things you got to learn how to be encouraged by. Not always looking for the big picture. You ain't got your mama no more. You ain't got your daddy no more, but you got God. What did it say, Rita? Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4 and 4. I like that. Philippians 4 and 4 says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. What'd you say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Go ahead. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I want to I want to read out the King James Version tonight. Now, what KJV say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh -huh. And again, I say rejoice. Uh -huh. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your moderation be known to everyone. Now, read the NIV part of that same verse. What is that? Let your gentleness be evident to all. So don't, don't, in other words, even though you stress, don't be stressed out. Don't let everybody know what you're going through. You don't share what you're going through with everybody. Some things just belong to you and God. You don't share everything with everybody. Some people can't handle your problems. And look what the writer says. In verse 4, he said, rejoice always in the Lord. And then he said, let your moderation be known unto all men. Don't let everybody know you're stressed out. Read, read it. Go to King James. Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh -huh. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah. Let your moderation be known unto all men. What? The Lord is at hand. Woo! So now. If you want to get rid of your stress, tell somebody Jesus is coming. Oh, you don't want to talk to nobody. You can spend too much time talking about a temporary pain. Any pain you got on earth is temporary. Tell your neighbor, it's temporary. You don't know what I'm going through. Temporary. Whatever pain you're, let me say it again. Whatever hurt, pain, disappointment you're going through on this earth is temporary. Temporary. 
lot that excites you right there. If I don't get victory on this side of town, I'm getting victory yeah. on the other side of town. Hallelujah. This look, this little pain can't can't compare to the glory of my God. To what God gonna show me. So my hope is not in what you can do for me. My hope is in what God can do for me. And whatever you do for me, God touch you to do for me. So I'm going to give God praise no matter how it comes. So watch what the writer says. This is good. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything. What you say? But in everything. What? By prayer and supplication. Give, give God communication. That's what your prayer is. Prayers keep talking to God. Don't talk to me, because I'm crying too. Don't, don't keep telling me what you're going through. Tell God what you're going through. He tell you, pray to him. Communicate to God first. Don't call, don't, don't call up into the church. It's pastor there. Don't even drop by. If you got an issue, I'm telling you how to handle it right now. But the problem is, you want to touch somebody so you can lay that mess on them. That's good, Bishop. First of all, you got it. You got issues. Me too. Issue plus issue. Divided by issue equals issues. So why would we talk to each other about each other's problem all the time? Granted, I need to talk sometime, but every time I see you, how you doing? Child, pray for me. Why do I have to always pray with you and for you every time I see you? And the Bible just told you with your crying self, the Bible just told you with your hurting self. The Bible just told you with your doubting self. Do what? Be careful for nothing. Read. But in everything. Everything. By prayer. No, no, so everything. What's your everything? That's all right. I need Alicia singing now. What's your everything? <laughs> Name your everything. What's your everything? Everybody got everything. You got something. But watch what the Bible says. Be careful for nothing. Uh -huh. But in everything. What, what, what the writer said, don't hold back. Don't be careful. Don't hold back. Read. But in everything. But in your situation. By prayer and supplication. By communication. By communication. By talking to God. By giving God praise. By talking to God. And then he says something next. With supplication. Given. No, no. Supplication. Let him know what you need. When you talk to him, tell him what you need. If you believe he's the only one who can heal it. Everybody deal with stress. But now I'm teaching you how to carry your stress to the stress reliever. Can I bless you? God ain't stressed. He know how to get angry, but he don't get stressed. He don't take problems that the earth want to give and put them on his shoulders and say, I don't know what to do. Can you picture God who created everything and did his everything get heavy for him? What? He created everything, and then the very thing he created is too heavy for him. Now he's sitting in the corner talking to Jesus. Man, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> so you got to understand something about God. When he get angry, he don't get stressed. When he get mad, he ready to do something. But stress is never one of God's problems. <laughs> Come on. God ain't got no worries about money. And he ain't even got a dollar. <laughs> God ain't got no worries about a place to lay his head when the earth is too small for him. Hmm. The Bible says he put his foot on the earth. It's a footstool for him. This way he rested. He even told somebody, he said, I ain't even got a place to lay my head. And you around here worrying about what? Tell me what you worried about. I'm not belittling you. I know you got a, a stressful situation, but I'm trying to help you with your stress. It ain't all that important. Because once you get over it, you're going to have to face something else. And you need to remember, how did you overcome that first one? How did you overcome that number 100? How did you overcome that number 2,000? If you can overcome that, you can overcome this. You got to fight. Watch what the writer says. Verse 6. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing, uh -huh. but in everything, uh -huh. by prayer and supplication. By prayer 
That's communicating to God, and my supplications is what I need. God, this is what's going on. This is what I need. I need help with this. This is my supplication. I'm telling you what I have, I have a need of because the reason why you're telling me to give you my supplications is because you can only, you're the only one who can handle it. God is telling us in this scripture, tell God what your prayers and your supplications. Now watch this. Your supplication is what you have a need of. And when you tell somebody about your supplications, that means you know they can handle it. If you broke and you're talking to a rich man, and it's, that's your rich cousin, your rich daddy, but you broke, right? Hey, baby, how you doing, son? Hey, daddy, I'm doing good. What's wrong with your face? Man, I got this double light bill. I, ain't, I couldn't pay it last month. Now they want me to pay $200. Well, son, what you need? He asks you what you need. Well, son, what you need? Well, I just need $200. That's my supplication. Who you talking to? Somebody I know can handle it. I don't know why you missed that. I just gave you scripture. What did the Bible say? Read it again. But in everything. But in everything. By prayer and supplication. By communication and letting the one know who can handle what I need, what's going on in my life. He the only one can handle it. So let me tell him what's going on. Because I keep telling you all my problems. Oh, you're going to say, I'm praying for you. <laughs> can I help you? Can I, can I give you a news bulletin? I'm already doing that. But that's all you can give me, which is great, which is nothing wrong. I love the fact that you can pray for me. You can pray when somebody tell you what they're going through, and you say, man, I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. Appreciate that. People sending me all kinds of emails and text messages who ain't going through no hurricane. Hey, man, how is it up there? Sunny and shiny and blue skies. What's your plan? I'm going to ride it out and trust God. Well, what you need, what you got. <laughs> Some people just don't know what to say in, a, in, a, in, your, in your trial. So true, Bishop. My God. What can you, what can you offer me in my trial? If you, if you ain't got the solution, the only thing you can do for me is talk to God. We bombard heaven together. And that's all they could tell me on Facebook and on emails and text messages. I'm praying for you. And some of them, they, they, they know they were playing. Yeah, you need somewhere to come, Doc. Come on down. Come on over here. You stay with us. Man, when the sun was shining, you ain't nice me to come stay with you. <laughs> I'm just playing. Watch what it say, Rita. But in everything, yeah. by prayer and supplication, uh -huh. with thanksgiving. Okay. Now, as I'm talking to who I'm talking to, prayer mean I ain't talking to you. Prayer don't mean I'm talking to you. Prayer means I'm talking to God. And so if I'm talking to God with my supplication, I'm bringing my troubles, my heavy weight, I'm bringing it to God. Here you go, God, because I can't take no more. I can't carry this no more. This is all yours. That's my supplication. Now, as I get, carry it, drop it off. Father, I want to give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. I give you glory. I give you. Even though you're still crying, believe you dropped it off. Believe that what you said to God, he heard you. Even though you're crying, believe he got it. Read that again. I can't get out of Sean, it's your fault. Sean, it's your fault. <laughs> but in everything. You always in the spirit. Why, why are you? <laughs> well, I ain't going to say always. Just tonight. Just tonight. <laughs> Philippians 4, verse 4 says what again? Rejoice in the Lord always. Look what the writer start off by saying. He tell us to what, y'all? Rejoice. What did he say, y'all? Rejoice. He tell us to what? Rejoice. Rejoice. And what else? In the Lord always. In God. And what else? And, I, and again, I say rejoice. And just, and just in case you didn't hear me the first time, let me say it again. Rejoice. Read. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let the world know why you're crying. The Lord is at hand. That Jesus is still coming. My pain ain't going to stop me from telling somebody, Jesus is still coming. Ooh. Read. Be careful for nothing. Don't hold back. But in everything. But in every problem, yeah. every situation, every doubt, every fear, what? By prayer and supplication. Start off with prayer. I ain't talking to Pastor Ellis. I ain't talking to Pastor Randy. I ain't talking to Pastor Bruin. I'm talking to God. I ain't going to pray to Pastor Ellis. He can't do nothing for me. 
Prayer don't go for Pastor Ellis. It go for God. So the scripture don't tell you to pray with Pastor Ellis. It say pray to God. Read. But in everything. Yes. By prayer and supplication. Read. With thanksgiving. After I tell God, I talk to God, I tell God what it is, and then I praise God. You see those three things right there? I tell God, I talk to God, tell God, praise God. Read it again. They miss it. But in everything. Yes. By prayer. Talk to God. And supplication. Share it with God. What's going on? With thanksgiving. Then I praise God. Everything centered around God. Read. Let your requests be known unto God. Who? God. Pastor Ellis. God. Pastor Ellis. God. I need Pastor Ellis to know what I'm going through. God. So look at here. You mean to tell me we ain't no Catholic church. You don't have to come through me to talk to God. So you mean to tell me you can talk to God yourself? You just got to believe he heard you. Read, reader. And the peace of God. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where you get that from? You mean to tell me if I pray to God, tell God, what, tell God all about it, praise God for it, and what comes next? And the peace of God. I talk to God, tell God, then I praise God, and then what happened? And the peace of God. I talk to God. I tell God, and then I praise God. Then and what the happened? peace of God. But I still got that weight. And the peace of God. I still have this weight. And the peace of God. What would happen? And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. In, in, in other words, the scripture is saying, it ain't going to make sense why you got peace in this midst, in this problem. It ain't going to make sense why you got peace when you should be crying still. Hallelujah. It ain't going to make sense why you telling God, thank you, and you ain't got a job. Jesus. It ain't going to make sense to say, God, I give you praise. <laughs> the world can't understand your peace. Yes. Now you see why some things are happening in your life negative. God is allowing some negative things to happen in your life because he know you're going to get peace. The world need to see the Christian crying too. The world is crying with no hope. The Christian is sitting there saying, Lord, I thank you. You already know what I'm going through, but I give you praise, God. I give you glory. And the, and the, and the world saying, let me look at that Christian. And then they want to ask you a question. What is going on when you done lost your job? You done got diagnosed? You ain't got no money to pay your bills? And you over here talking, God is good? Now you go back up to verse 5. Come on, read it. Let your moderation be known unto all men. My pain just gave me an outlet to tell somebody about Jesus. Read verse 5 again. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your moderation to everybody read. Be known unto all men. Uh -huh. The Lord is at hand. See, look at that. Your tears going to cause somebody to get witness to. I know this hard. I know this hard for some of y'all to clap because you're sitting there worrying. You're sitting here worrying. I know what worry looks like. I know what worry feels like because I worry all the time. But I'm preaching to me right now. Boy, go ahead on, boy. God going to give you some peace that pass all understanding. You, you can't even comprehend this peace. All this hell breaking loose and you got peace. You giving God glory in the midst of everything. Woo, it should have been worse. Somebody help me. You crying about a penny when you should have lost $1,000. It should have been worse. I can't believe this is happening to me. Okay, before you look for a pity party, go find you Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice first. Pray to God. Tell God all about it. Then give him praise. And then wait on your peace. He can't lie. 
If I ain't got no peace, that means I'm lying. If I, ain't got a, if I don't have peace in the midst of my crime, that means I'm lying. Because he already told me that's a promise. I promise you, if you talk to me, you praise me, you give me glory, I give you peace. Read, reader. And the peace of God, yes. which passeth all understanding. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. I can't even comprehend why you so happy in this dead situation. How in the world are you able to give God glory in this here? Man, I don't went up to people who I know was dying in the hospital. I went up to them saying, you know, praise the Lord. How you doing? God is good. Well, great day. You don't mess me up. You don't want to die, but you act, I act like I'm dying. God tried to build up on your most holy faith, not always heal your body. You keep looking for the healing. You keep looking for the finances, but you don't see your soul getting healed. You don't see you can cast out demons with your words. You don't even know the reason why you broke is because God wants you to speak money. Boy, that went over somebody's head. God allowing you to be broke so you can start talking to the east, the north, the south, the west, up, the down. You come to me, money. But you ain't saying nothing. That's why you stay broke. The only thing you say is, I'm always broke. I'm always good. And I ain't got no money. Maybe you broke financially is because you won't position yourself to make money. What is it that you can do and get you a trade in? Get that trade down and master that trade. You want to know how Burger King got started? They copied off McDonald's. You want to know how McDonald's got started? They copied off Wendy's. You want to know how Wendy's got started? They copied off Crystal's. Everybody copied off everybody. But everybody's turned it around. Same burger, but, but Burger King said, let's turn it this way. <laughs> Crystal said, turn it sideways. Somebody said, turn the fire up higher. Somebody said, turn the fire down low. Somebody said, just brought it. Somebody said, boil it. <laughs> I was just going to see if you're paying attention. But some of y'all just be saying amen to anything. The cat jumped over the hat. Yeah! He preaching. He preaching. He just said the cat jumped over the hat. That's all he said. <laughs> but it's amazing. Everybody copied off everybody. And you mean tell me you can't cop off somebody? You mean tell me God can't breathe on what you? Wait a minute. The evil man got it, but God can't breathe on the same man to do it? Say it, Bishop. Lord, I'm trusting you. Here's your word right here. Here's your word. Since you're trusting him, you're looking for some more money, here's your word. But the problem is, you don't want to do nothing. you waiting on it to come out the sky. I told somebody the other day, they told me, said, Pastor, I'm playing a lottery. I said, okay, remember me. I ain't going to play, but I'm sure pulling for you. <laughs> don't forget me now, Pastor. You know I ain't going to forget you. Thank you. If I'm going to do all that, I might well play. Why don't I go get me a trade? Why don't, why don't I master what I already know and carry it further? Okay. You want to do just like that baby doing right now. Crying, crying. I'm going through, Pastor. Okay, you're going through because you won't do nothing. Get off your rusty, dusty. You're going through something. Don't you want to come out? I want to talk to somebody. Don't you want to come out? Is anybody in anything? Is anybody in anything? Are you going through anything? Oh, you ain't going to say. Watching my internet. Raise your hand. You going through something? Well, then let me help you come out of it. Work your way out of it by praising it. Yeah. Why are you praising it? I don't know where I'm going, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sit right here. You know, I learned something about yoga. As, 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 you know, as some, you know, it can be evil, but I can use it for my good. Do you know that I can, all I got to do is sit down somewhere and, and meditate on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me? 
And my soul cry out. Hallelujah. I need to turn the radio off. I need to get somewhere and be quiet, be still. Put the cell phone down and just meditate, yoga my way. I, 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 just meditate my way into the presence of God. Meditate, let my mind be saturated on where he brought me from, where he kept me, how he keeping me, where he directed me. If I can just motivate myself in my quiet place. You can learn something from yoga. They get somewhere and be still. Get somewhere and be still. You keep trying to do everything and accomplishing nothing. <laughs> trying to help the world and the world too big for you. What does it say, Andrew? Philippians 4, 7. Yes. And the peace of God, yes. which passeth all understanding, yes. shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What verse that is? Verse 7. Keep going. Finally, brethren. Oh, fi finally? You, you mean, Tim, there's a final page? What's the final page, Angie? Whatsoever things are true. Oh, so now I'm fixing to show you how to think. Earlier, I showed you how to talk. Now I'm going to show you how to think. What should I think on, Angie? Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever is true. Whatsoever things are honest. Honest. Whatsoever things are just. Just. Whatsoever things are pure. Pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Good report. If there be any virtue. Read. If there be any praise. Read. Think on these things. But Paul said something to us Sunday when I would try to think on the goodness of Jesus. When I would try to act holy, I see in my members another law. My mind is being in warfare. Everything come on my mind is stressing me out. So I got to learn how to make my mind be disciplined. I can tell a dog what to do. I can even get an alligator to act right. I can get a wild lion to be tamed, but I can't tame my mind. Just because I want a cigarette don't mean I need to get it. I need something to calm me down. We, we know you smoke, but why don't you wean yourself off of it? Just because you need it, it may be just in your, it is, it's, it's right here. Fight yourself Amen. from your cravings. Amen. Every craving that come on your mind, it don't mean you need to act it out. What do the Bible say? Fight. Yes. Many of us ain't fighting. We drinking. We're smoking, we're sexing, we're running and hiding. Why? Because I don't like fighting myself. It's easy to pop a pill. It's easy to get a drink. It's easy to have sex. But I don't. You, any of y'all been watching the Bobby Brown uh, show? You haven't? I have. I ain't looking at that junk. I, I watched it because I want to get me a revelation. Bobby Brown was in prison down in Florida. He was a crackhead, drug addict. And they didn't give him no drugs in prison. He was having pain in his body, shakes, waking up 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, throwing up. And his buddy sitting right there. And his buddy looked at him. He woke his buddy up. His buddy looked at him in the cell and shook his head. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, Bobby could get beat up. You're waiting on prison up at 4 o'clock. Bobby over there throwing all up, laying on the ground sick because his body wants drugs. And when you can't get drugs, your body goes through craving. And his buddy sat there on the side of the bed and looked at him. And Bobby said, help me. The man looked at him with pity. He said, it's going to be all right. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. Don't give up. You got to fight yourself. I said, he preaching like I preach. He got down and wiped up the vomit that was on the floor to help Bobby out. And the next day, the chow time, and Bobby sitting up there eating, and, 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 a, and a man, I don't even want to deal with color, a man came over because he saw Bobby shaking. He said, yeah, I got what he need. Went over there to him. You got to see how the devil do? Mm -hmm. I used to have you. And you trying to come, you trying to break up with me? 
you, you trying to break up with me? I kill you before I let you break up with me. I had you good. And the, the man offered Bobby some drugs. He said, here, take this. Bobby, look. So you understand now, he's going through withdrawals. Withdrawals mean you want it bad. But his mind, he fought himself. He said, huh? The man walked away. He said, that's all right. You'll call me because you got that look. You look like you crazy. You look like you desperate. You're going to call me. And that's what the devil is doing right now. The devil is sitting back saying, you're going to come back. And if you don't come back, I come to you. And I'm going to bring up some problems in your life because I got to get you back. Michael Jackson, ooh, ooh, baby, I want you back. <laughs> and when the devil can't get you, he go after what you love. You better hear me now, because you're going to cry later. You better hear me now. You better hear me now. Whatever you love, the devil coming after. But you got to believe God got you. Watch what it say, Reed. I got to go home. They mad. Finally, brethren, yes. whatsoever things are true, yes. whatsoever things are honest. Give me Matthew 6.35. I'm going home. Matthew 6.25. Matthew 6.25. Run. Matthew 6.25. Matthew 6.25. Hold on to Matthew 6.25, but I want you to read John 14.27. John 14.27. I want you to read it like you're mad. John 14.27 out of NIV. What did it say, Angie? 14.27. I think that's what I said. <laughs> St. John 14, 27, but I want to start there reading first, then we're going to come over to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 25, what St. What, uh, John 14, 27 says. Peace I leave with you. What you say? Peace I leave with you. So what you need is already here. God just told us, go to verse 1 of 14, 1. What 14, 1 says? What 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your, what? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Look what he says to us. Let is a condition word. So what you're going through most of the time is what you're allowing. Nobody can affect your brain but you. 14.1 says what? Do not let your hearts be troubled. He gave you a commandment. Do not. Do not. I'm trying to push it in your throat. Do not. Read. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your heart. Don't let your heart. Don't let your heart. But Pastor, you know what I'm going through. Don't let your heart. Guard your heart. Protect your heart. But Pastor, it's so hard. I know it is, but protect your heart. Read. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Yes. You believe in God. Ah, that's the key right there. Do you believe in God? Read. Believe also in me. Now go to verse 27. What it says. Peace I leave with you. Your peace. God's peace. He's leaving with us. Read. My peace I give you. Uh-huh. I do not give you as the world gives. The world got a peace, but it's called drugs, drinking, sexing, TV, lying, internet, sex, everything you can think of that's negative. The world trying to give you peace. The world got peace. You do get peace when you get drunk. You do get peace when you have sex outside of marriage. You do get peace when you do drugs. He just told you. Read it again. Peace I leave with you. God said, I got a peace that I'm going to leave with you. But my peace, whoo, the world can't even touch my peace. Watch, watch what it says next. My peace I give you. Uh huh. I do not give you as the world gives. The world give you a peace, but their peace is temporary. And God says, the peace I'm going to give you, it ain't like the world. So you mean to tell me, God, you got a high that ain't like no other high? I need to chase that high. Because if you get this high, you ain't never got to drink a well again. Read. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Uh -huh. And do not be afraid. Yes. You heard me say. What you say? I am going away. Uh -huh. And I am coming back to you. Stress. Stress. When Jesus tell you he's leaving. Jesus even has stress. When he was in the garden, he got stressed. But it's so wonderful, the pattern he gave us of how to come out of stress. Jesus in a stressful situation, he got to face it. But he don't want to face it. But he got to face it. But he don't want to face it. But he did the right thing. Father, he went to prayer. Father, 
take this cup from me, supplication. Then, well, since God ain't talking, let me go find my buddies. Y'all sleep. God damn. <laughs> Went back and talked to the father again. When God ain't answering, keep talking. He talked to God three times. Watch this. On the third time, he said what? Not my will. So in other words, my stressful situation, it may not be my will. Maybe what I'm going through is God's will. You got God got two types of will, perfect and permissive. Permissive will, I'll let that happen to you because I already know what you're going to do. Can I bless you with Romans 8.28? Then I'm going to come back. Can I give you Romans 8.28? Angie, turn to Romans 8.28. I want to show all the believers. How many believers in here? How many non-believers in here? All right, since everybody's a believer, then this is your scripture, Romans 8.28. What Romans 8.28 says? And we know. Wait a minute, stop. What you say? And we know. That's dealing with the mind again. That's dealing with your understanding. Look what he says next. That in all things. What? Pain. Angie. All things. Correct. All things. Bad marriage. All things. Bad children. All things. Bad health. All things. Bad finances. All things. What? God works for the good. It all works. It all. See, the problem is you want to figure it out. You know what I, I love about God? Some of the things that is happening in my life, I wouldn't let it happen. If I had control of it. You don't mind if I say that again, do you? The things that happen in my life, if I had full control, there's no way I would let them happen. Because I got my own way of how I need to grow. But, but then God allowed a hurricane to come. God, no. Then he let a bomb get dropped down. Come on, God. Then he let all kinds of windstorm and troubles and trials and dogs and snakes. I say, my God, there's no way I can come out of this. Wait a minute. I'm hearing more praises over there. You mean to tell me it took this storm for a praise to come out? It took this storm to see a praise. But if I had my way, I wouldn't have had these storms. I'd have just got a praise. But that would have been for me. But sometimes God allows you to go through stuff for other folks. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of a testimony. You got to have a testimony. How you going to tell me what God can do? And you ain't been through nothing. When the last time you said, let me tell you how the devil slapped my family. But let me tell you how God pulled my family out. Let me tell you how the devil slapped my finances. But let me tell you how God gave me provision. Let me tell you how the devil slapped my marriage. But let me tell you how God gave me a honeymoon. Wow! I ain't as strong as I feel. But I, got, I, I feel something. Let me tell you what I feel. I feel a wow! Because see, some of y'all don't come to church to get a word. Some of y'all come to church to be nosy. Let me hear what pastor going through. Let me hear what, what he going through. You better hear me and hear me good. Because if you don't hear me, you're getting ready to go through something. And if God can bring me out, tell our neighbor, next, 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 next. God getting ready to do a next. You better get ready. I heard Jake say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for a breakthrough. The world getting ready to get worse. But guess what? God already better. <laughs> So no matter how bad the devil get, 
He can't keep up with God. God already better. This thing already fixed. What verse you in, Rita? Romans 8, 28. What Romans 8, 28 say? And we know. What you know? That in all things. All things. God Come on, works somebody. What thing? All things. What thing? Open your mouth. What thing? Read. That in all things, yes. God works for the good of those who love him. Read. Who have been called according to his purpose. Read. For those God foreknew. That God foreknew. He also predestined. He already predestined you. To be conformed to the image of his son. Read. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God already brought you out. Listen, if you don't believe God already brought you out, why did you get baptized? So now you live in a hypocrite life. You got baptized, but now all of a sudden you don't believe God. You mean to tell me you understood that being baptized was going until his death. And then when you came out the water, you were just like Jesus. You coming out with all power, just like Jesus. So you went into the water buried, but you came out alive. So you mean to tell me your problem's going to get buried one day? You mean to tell me you ain't excited yet? That's why the writer told you to rejoice. Because your problem ain't going to last long. Yeah. Hurry up and read Matthew 6. I got to go home. Matthew 6. I got to get two minutes left. Matthew 6. Women newly appointed deacons. Newly appointed deacons. Go over there and get that bucket. Matthew 6, 25. What Matthew 6, 25 says. Therefore I tell you. Yes. Do not worry about your life. Don't you worry about your life. Edwards, yeah, go on, get, yeah, oh, get, he, they, you, you fairly knew, but he really knew. Yeah, he really knew. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. High five your neighbor, say, pass it on. I'm pulling for you, I'm pulling for you. Tell your neighbor, I'm pulling for you. Matthew 6, 35 says what? 25. Therefore I tell you, what? do not worry about your life. What you say? Do not worry about your life. Say it again with Do her. not worry about your life. Preach with her. Do not worry about your life. Read. What you will eat or drink. I don't know what I'm eating and drink. Or about your body. About what your you body. Wear. I ain't got no clothes, Pastor, to come to church in. Is not life more than food? Uh huh. And the body more than clothes? Read. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the birds that fly in the air in your yard. They do not sow or reap. Birds don't work nowhere. Or store birds don't work nowhere. But they always find food in your yard. They wake you up if you got a tree. Birds get up before you do. They bird, the bird know I got to get up early. Read. Look at the birds of the air. Yes. They do not sow or reap. Birds don't work nowhere. Or store. And they, and wait a minute. They don't sow nowhere, and they don't get nothing in return. They don't sow nothing, and they don't get nothing. They ain't plant nothing, and they don't receive nothing. But look at their faith. Read. Or store away in barns. They don't put no food in barns to store it up so they can eat it the next day. And yet. And what you say? And yet. Say it again. And yet. One more time. And yet. Tell the neighbor, and yet. And yet. Read. Your heavenly father. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think the part you missed is what he said. The part you missed is what he said was your, your heavenly father. Your daddy. You mean to tell me your daddy will take care of birds that ain't going to heaven? You mean to tell me. Your daddy will take care of bird. You mean tell me your daddy going to skip you and go take care of bird that don't work nowhere? Read, reader. Are you not much more valuable than they are? You don't know who you are. Let's go home, read. Can any of you by worrying? By worrying? Okay, since, sing, you, since you like to worry, since you like to worry, tell me what, reader? Can any of you by worrying uh -huh. add a single hour to your life? Can you live another hour when you get ready to die? Read. And why do you worry about clothes? Why are you worrying about clothes? You still wearing the same clothes in your closet? See how the flowers of the field grow. Look at I-440. They ain't got no uh, water system out there. They do not labor or spin. They got flowers don't do nothing, but read. Yet I tell you. What? That not even Solomon in all his splendor. And Solomon with all his money and all his gold and all his jewelry. Was dressed like one of these. And yet Solomon wasn't pretty as the flowers on I-440. You missed that. I don't know why you missed that. 
street. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field. If God know how to clothe the grass on the field. Which is here today. Yeah. And tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Read. Will he not much more. Much more. Clothe you. If God will clothe the ground, why don't he clothe you? You of little faith. That's your problem right there. You ain't got no faith. You believe God to get a job, but you don't believe God to feed you. You better believe God. You tithe and believe God. You be faithful and believe God. You love people and believe God. Forgive people and believe God. You don't know what they're doing to me. Yes, I do. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. God love you. Come on, say it. God love me. And whatever I'm going through, it's working. For my destiny. my destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for my favor. Thank you. All standing, all standing. Father, I thank you right now for your word. We give you praise and glory. God, we thank you for relieving stress right now. God, we came in here bound and worried and trying to figure out what we're going to do. But God, you taught us tonight on stress, how to overcome stress, how to believe you for stress, that stress is going to walk away. And if I do get stressed, God, you're going to give me Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you my supplication, and I'm going to always talk to you. I'm going to rejoice forevermore that, God, you're in control. Thank you for healing my family. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for healing my finances. Thank you for healing my church. Thank you for healing my praise. Thank you for healing my glory to you. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. You are God all by yourself. Ain't none like you. Never will be. Never have been. God, you're good. God, you're great. I'm going to keep saying it until I get a breakthrough. God, you're good. God, you're great. God, you're awesome. I'm going to keep saying it until I get me a healing. God, I thank you. You've been so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we hear the account of this storm that they call Florence. God, you spared us. God, it was direct hit to Raleigh, North Carolina. But God, we, we're not just rejoicing because we're not going to get hit. But God, we will feel some of the remnant. But God, we pray for them that's on the coast, those that will feel the category four. We intercede in the name of Jesus. Let a miracle take place. Hey, let a miracle remove stress, bring forth healing. Let this storm be a Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. Father, we pray continuously for those who are going to be affected by this storm. Whatever house get torn down, if a life is taken, if a person lose everything, let them be reminded, God, that Romans 8, 28, that this storm is working for our good. God, we thank you right now. You said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And if it's your will, Father, and if it's your will, and if it's your will, Father, make that storm die out now. Yeah. Father, we thank you for everything you have said and done tonight. We've learned how to overcome stress is through your word. Now, Father, bless our going out. Bless my coming in. Bless my giving to the glory of God. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a few pointers of how to deal with some stress and I want some physical things. I gave you some spiritual things. Now I want to give you some physical things. Number one, get involved physically. Indulge yourself in physical activities. Start off walking in your neighborhood. Get involved walking. Physical. Get physical. That's going to help you relieve your stress. Number two, try to go to sleep at a certain time. I'm bad. I know I'm talking to the piper, but I, ain't, I go to sleep 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning almost every night. But try to go to sleep at a certain time. Even if you can't go to sleep, just, just pray and lay in your bed and just thank God you're in your bed. Don't frustrate yourself because you can't go to sleep. 
See, that's why you're, you're not able to sleep. You're frustrating yourself because you can't go to sleep. You're getting mad because you can't go to sleep. Just learn to just lay there and relax. I'm in my bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm wide awoke, but at least I'm in my bed. I'm in my safety place. And I'm going to just tell God thank you and praise him right here. At least I'm getting some rest. Number three, try relaxation techniques. Find something that will help you relax. I like to play spades on my computer. That helps me relax. It takes my mind off certain things. Find out what you like to do. And number four, talk to somebody. That's, you're going to get healed if you talk to somebody. Number four, five, manage your time. Don't let your time manage you. Give yourself a plan. Give yourself an outlet. Tell yourself what you're going to do at this hour, that hour. Give yourself a plan. Stay busy. Keep your mind occupied. The next one, avoid caffeine. Try to stay away from anything that's got a lot of caffeine and, and also sugar. You'd be surprised that sugar also can play a negative effect on your body, on your mind. Too much sugar. You're drinking sodas at, right before you go to bed. Don't do that. I wouldn't even drink orange juice if I was you right, right before you go to bed. Drink some milk or drink some water. You know, be careful what you drink. You know, stay away from caffeine. Try to avoid cigarettes. You know, uh, here's the last one. And, and I already said it. This is powerful. You cannot help everybody. So this is a very stress reliever right here. No. You are dismissed. 